Hello, YouTubers. I'm not an expert, and today we're going to hot rod a tenon saw. But wait, we've already done that. You may have seen my earlier video, I'll put a link up there, where I did this tenon saw following Rex Kruger's example and his instructions and used his fine template to make a very good looking handle. As part of that video, I had a new saw that I got and uh, wanted to use as an example. So I thought I'll do this one also, but I'll do it a little differently. So I made the handle dark with some stain and some shellac on it. And I resharpened the saw to be a crosscut saw, which was quite a challenge. And my results were not all that great, but they're okay. So look at the end. If you skip back to the end, you'll see me do some cutting examples uh, rather awkwardly, but um, show you how it went. Uh, and you can, uh, Watch the middle of the video, I'll show you parts of how I did it so you can kind of get an idea of how the, the project goes when it's being done by somebody who's not a professional woodworker. Here we go. All right, this is the Spear and Jackson handsaw. It's a tenon saw, it says traditional brass back tenon saw, 15 ppi, that's points per inch, www.spearandjackson.com. Now, this is the saw we're going to be modifying. Uh, we're going to take the handle off. We're going to clean the lacquer off the blade, and we're going to resharpen it. Oh, yeah. Works on the first try that way. Now, I've probably lost that. Well, the clutter in the floor, well, maybe I'll find the other parts I'm missing when I'm down there. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, I found the screws. Now we have to take the... Ah, let me turn it around so you can see it. We need to take out the medallion. Need something smaller to get in there and get out. Just a little bit too big. Oh, there we go. Grab it with my fingertip. Oh, that one came right up. And the blade comes off. So let's take a look. The medallion, right, which says SJ, Spear and Jackson, and the other side of it was simply this, uh, this big screw, which I bent. I may uh, experiment now with putting better ones on. I had an easier time with the first ones. We'll see what happens with that. Now the saw comes coated with a lacquer. When I first got the other one, I tried various solvents, not knowing what the coating really was. And finally, I settled on good old fashioned acetone. Let's see what happens. Now, probably saying to yourselves, hey, maybe you shouldn't just pour that all over everywhere. But that's not how I do things. I pour stuff all over everywhere. Now, not only is this taking off the labeling, that the company put on, but it's there's actually a clear lacquer over the whole blade, which sort of wears off when you're sawing, but it's it looks crummy and it it kind of prevents you from waxing the blade. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take it all off. And that seems to have removed it all. I might need to go do a second coat. And I'll have to do the other side. And then after I get that all cleaned up, we'll come back and we'll start on the next step. I have the cutouts from Rex's uh, page, and I've put on some spray glue. I'm just going to apply them and be ready. Let's see. Uh, all right. Okay, and then I'm simply going to cut away the dark, brown where it's light, and leave the gray. Now 
All right, should come out come looking pretty good. I'll come back after I've uh, after that's cured, and I've done some cutting. A couple of minutes on the bandsaw, and I have it roughly cut out. You can see how square that is. So I'm going to need to get out my coping saw and take out this little piece in the center. I forgot to do that on the first one, but as I recall, I was visiting my father, and I I don't think he had a good coping saw. It takes a it's a pretty healthy piece of wood, so. I'm going to put the that notch into this one for sure, and then some more rounding will make that real pretty. Round this off, round these areas off. It's going to look pretty good. I'm not going to do all that on camera, though. You'll just have to take my word for it when you see it when it's complete. Quick look at the handle after some sanding and some filing, and here's some of the tools that I use. You can see files of various shapes and sizes. And you get in there. You dig away at it, and pretty soon it looks pretty nice. Need a little more sanding, put some boiled linseed oil on it, and we'll call it good. Let's take a look at this now that I've done some sanding and some refinishing. And I put a few coats of uh, dark walnut stain on it and a couple coats of shellac. Now I got the shellac at place called the shellac shack online they sell samples so you can uh, make a small batch this is their super blonde over the dark walnut now let me show you what the other saw looks like that's the same handle with boiled linseed oil i like the boiled linseed oil look better to be honest with you but i wanted them to be visually distinct and i didn't like the way the stain looked before I put the shellac on it. It was a little blotchy. I guess Beach does that, but it came out pretty good. Time for a little test fit. I've slipped it back onto the saw, and what I can see is that this uh, decorative notch I've made has left a little bit of saw blade visible. I'll probably just cut that out of the way. Not sure how yet. That shouldn't be a big deal. So here's the completed saw. Uh, I've done the handle. I've re- Placed the uh, the sort of rivets that it had with saw nuts off of another saw. So this says warranted superior and a couple of silver nuts. I need to set those in a little better. I'm still kind of working on it. And I have resharpened the blade. Now, resharpening the blade has been a bit of a challenge. I've done it, gone over it three times. And so we're going to do a little test and I'll show you how it cuts set up for cross cut. Time to do some testing. Got the saw, got a piece of pine with a line drawn on it. Let's see if I can follow the line. That'll be the biggest challenge. Okay. Put a big dent in the board by slamming that in there. Let's take a look. Okay, you can see what finished cut looks like that's not too bad of course it's a little rough because i wasn't real gentle with it let's try this piece of mahogany it's african mahogany not a true mahogany for those of you who are into the trivia well, the bench was a little more stable but Open this summer to address that. All right, awkward sawing. We'll get a look. I don't remember where the camera is. Get that to focus. That doesn't look so bad. We'll put it up against the pine to see if there's a gap. Ignore the pencil line that I missed completely. That is not too bad. Let's try it with a harder piece of wood. I've got a piece of what I believe is white oak, the weirdest looking red oak ever. Some kind of oak.
tell you, I practiced this before I turned the saw on, before I turned the saw on, before I turned the camera on, and it's uh, smooth as butter. As soon as I got the camera going, not so great. But, okay, that's not a bad looking line. All of these, it's either me or the set's a little off. I bet the set's a little bit off and it's going to the left, to the right. It's pretty straight. So it's not too terrible. Could use a little work. It's not the smoothest I've ever seen, but it's pretty smooth. Looking pretty nice. So let's talk about the sharpening a little bit. If I can figure out where the how to get this in there. So I sharpened this three times. And sharpening crosscut was a little bit difficult. I think if you want to learn, you might be better off practicing with a larger saw bigger teeth. I had a lot of trouble just seeing where I was supposed to be. So in conclusion, is it a project you can do? Absolutely. Is it worth doing? I think so. It was a lot of fun. It was certainly worth the money just for the fun. I think the handle looks good. I think the new saw nuts look good. And yeah, I think overall came out kind of a nifty little saw. All right, that's all I got for now. We'll catch you later.